In June 1979, uh, Jerry Falwell Sr., a flamboyant Baptist minister, announced his intentions to build one of the most powerful political coalitions in American history. The moral majority, as it would later be tagged, was not only instrumental in the election of Ronald Reagan, it also forged this bond um, between the Republican Party and Christian fundamentalist groups that persist till this day. Now, consider how many conservative candidates have in recent years called for their Christian beliefs to serve as the bedrock of American identity. You have Doug Mastriano in uh, Pennsylvania. He just won the Republican gubernatorial, gubernatorial primary, excuse me. Uh, and he claimed that the separation of church and state is a myth. Now, that sentiment has been echoed by Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene. In fact, just this month, Boebert described the separation of church and state as junk. Now, you might be tempted to dismiss that statement, but this is coming from a sitting member of Congress. Beliefs that used to be held by fringe extremists are now held by people who hold positions of power inside the U.S. government. And arguably, nowhere has been more impacted by this ongoing bond between Christian fundamentalists and conservatives than the Supreme Court. Just this term, the court's conservative majority ruled that state programs providing money for public school tuition cannot exclude religious schools. Now, the conservative majority backed a high school football coach who was suspended by a public school district for leading Christian prayers with players on the field. But, and this is the most important point for us to make here, the influence of Christian extremism on the Supreme Court goes well beyond cases with a specific religious bent. It's the reason the court just overturned Roe v. Wade. The official moral majority movement was disbanded in the late 80s, but it is clear that we now are and will be forever changed as a nation because of the religious beliefs of the few. Joining me now is Lawrence Tribe, a professor at Harvard Law School and co-author of To End a Presidency, The Power of Imp Impeachment. Uh, professor Tribe, it's great to have you back on the show. Uh, talk to me from a legal point of view how you believe conservatives have eroded the wall separating church and state in America. Well, thank you for having me on, Emlyn, and thank you so much for recognizing that this fundamental issue, fundamental to the very nature of our republic, which is not supposed to be a theocracy, but is supposed to be a secular Republican form of government. Thank you for recognizing that this issue is present not only in the obvious cases, like cases where a public football coach surrounded by players who are pressured to join him in prayer raise an issue about separation of church and state, not just in cases where public money is spent on religious schools, but cases where our freedom, our liberty, our bodily integrity is involved, specifically the overruling of Roe versus Wade. When the court, in the majority opinion by Justice Alito, said that this case is different from all others, you don't have to worry about same-sex marriage, you don't have to worry about uh, contraception, you don't have to worry about sexual intimacy, because in this case, we are protecting the life of an unborn child. From the moment of conception, the court basically says, there is a unique soul. They didn't use those words, but that's the only way to understand this decision. Now, there are many religions that teach that a human soul is created at conception, but there is no secular basis to draw that line. Some religions have a very different view. They say that until a much later point in pregnancy, all you have is potential life. And of course, there's potential life. That's true even of the unfertilized ovum. But there are some religions, some Orthodox Jews, some others who are going to court saying, our religion teaches that we must prioritize the health and the life of the mother over the fetus. When we have disputes of that religious kind, the solution is not for the state to take sides, not for the states to say, as the Supreme Court said, some states may choose to say, that we're going to go with the Christian point of view, the point of view of certain uh, evangelicals or Catholics. 
But the solution is to leave the choice to the individual and her, her family, her doctor. Right. The court has crossed that line, and that's very dangerous. Why are the conservative justices, uh, Professor Tribe, go, so willing to go along with this, you think? Is it because of their own individual religious ideologies? Well, I can't pretend to know what makes them tick personally, but they're not just going along with it. This has been their agenda from the beginning. Amy Coney Barrett, who is a member of a particular religious group that says that the woman is supposed to do what her husband wants her to do, has from the very beginning said that Roe v. Wade is an abomination. Justices like Kavanaugh and Gorsuch, who are new on the court, and Alito and Thomas, who've been there a long time, have had this as part of their political agenda, to blend religion and politics. And as the dissenting justices said, that's very dangerous in a country of 300 million with over 100 religions. The only way we can have civil peace is to avoid having the government endorse any particular religious view. And until a few days ago, that was the position of the Supreme Court. There was a test, the non-endorsement test, that said whether or not anyone is forced to adopt a religion, the government should not put its weight behind a religious view, shouldn't endorse that view. Well, Justice Gorsuch, writing for the majority, in the uh, one of the cases that the court decided, specifically the case involving uh, Coach Kennedy, said we're no longer going to look at whether the government is putting its weight behind a certain religion unless we can find coercion. And then he basically presented a pretty phony picture of the facts. Justice Sotomayor right. in her dissent right. showed a picture of, of the pressure on the, on the football players. Yeah, he was not alone at the 50-yard line, as, as was widely believed when you look at the image. Where do you think this may lead us? I mean, you, you touched on this in the, um, uh, in the concurrence that was issued in the Roe uh, case that ultimately overturned Roe versus Wade in the Dobbs case, I should note. Um, and, and the fear, among others, is that this religious belief, when you listen to people like Ted Cruz, uh, who say that the Supreme Court made the wrong decision about uh, same-sex marriage, where do you see this going next? Well, I'm afraid it's not just Ted Cruz, but it was the justices themselves, several of them, who said that they don't think Obergefell, the case about same-sex marriage, really deserves to be respected as precedent. I haven't heard Justice Thomas, who has attacked Obergefell uh, and who has attacked uh, cases like uh, Lawrence v. Texas involving same-sex intimacy. I haven't heard him attack the Supreme Court's decision about interracial marriage, but it's all part of a fabric. It's all part of a fabric that says that when a certain kind of Christian belief says that you're not supposed to act in a certain way, the people who hold that belief can get states on their side to impose coercion. And when you have people imposing their beliefs coercively, uh, we're in trouble. One of the things that Justice Kavanaugh uh, and Justice uh, Thomas and some of the other justices did, uh, in particular Justice Alito in the majority opinion in Dobbs, he cites Sir Robert Hale in support of his view. Robert Hale was a 17th century thinker who believed that women should be burned as witches. I'm not saying this court will go that far. But a court that treats that as part of the original meaning of the Constitution right. and basically trashes the wall of separation between church and state that was so important to Jefferson uh, and Madison is a court that can re lead us to theocratical, uh, theocratic tyranny. That's the direction in which it's heading unless we do something about it.